Welcome to a special edition of New Center Now, Long Island. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at breast cancer, the terrible disease that has touched many lives. Most of us know someone, a friend, a family member who has dealt with it, some successfully, some not. Now we're gonna go for a ride on the Comet Impact. It's a virtual ride and it's sure to be scary. Is it gonna be scary? All right, it's going to be a blast. Now Alden's mission is to raise awareness and to promote the importance of early detection. The proof is in this newspaper article right here. It highlights just how he was able to save another man's life. You said I could never have an affair with any of my leading men. I'm a classic Turner Men's or Brothers kind of girl. Kind of a girl. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember saying that? No. It's amazing. I keep getting things quoted that I said about five years ago, and I have really? no recollection whatsoever. Oh, Mike, if you love Broadway, you're going to love this. Thousands will be flocking to Times Square this Sunday for the 14th annual Broadway on Broadway. The outdoor concert will not only attract crowds, it'll also cause some street closures. Times Square has become a staple for entertainment, dining, and shopping here in the Big Apple. And this weekend, theater goers will be tapping along to the songs of Broadway while drivers break tap through delays. You get to see 16 Broadway shows for free all at once and decide what you want to see. Folks will have the opportunity to preview their old faves at Broadway on Broadway. Phantom, which has been there for years. Beauty and the Beast, which has been there for years. Then you've got Hairspray, which is a little bit newer, but still a big hit. You can also catch a sneak peek of musicals that are set to debut this fall. Jessica Bovers and Christopher Hankey both star in a new play called In My Life. Um, it's a downtown sort of unlikely love story. Great New York, um, romantic love story with pop music, and it's really fun. And tell me a little bit about your character. I play a guy named JT. He's a singer-songwriter in his 20s. He has a few afflictions in his life. He has Tourette's syndrome and um, falls in love with this beautiful girl right here. It's estimated that 50,000 theater fans will be in attendance, so expect street closures. Broadway and 7th Avenue will be shut down from 43rd to 48th Streets. And if you're thinking about taking mass transit, keep in mind that there's scheduled maintenance that will disrupt subway service all weekend long. For more information, log on to mta.info. Okay, so Christina Applegate and John Lithgow will be hosting the event. The concert starts at 11.30 a.m. And for more information, visit broadwayandbroadway.com. Back to you guys. When you hear the name Da Vinci, the famous artist responsible for painting the Mona Lisa may come to mind. But today, that name transcends the art world and is becoming famous in the medical world, too. Imagine finding out you or someone you love is diagnosed with prostate cancer. For 62-year-old Mike Sheehy, it became a reality. After a routine physical examination, Sheehy says his primary care physician noticed an abnormality in his prostate. A biopsy was later performed and the result? Positive. When were you diagnosed with prostate cancer and what are some of the thoughts that ran through your mind? Basically confusion, uh, trying to find out all I could about the disease itself and all about treatments, mm -hmm. about the different options I had. Prostate cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer deaths in American men, second to lung cancer. The American Cancer Society estimates that this year about 186,320 new cases of prostate cancer will be diagnosed in the United States. However, more than 2 million men in the U.S. who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer at some point are still alive today. Because of surgical machines like this, it's called the Da Vinci robot, and doctors say it holds the key to the future of some surgical procedures. Dr. Seth Lerner is a surgeon here at White Plains Hospital and has treated she. When you're utilizing the da Vinci, you're looking through a lens or a telescope that magnifies things by 10 times. So even if you have 20-20 vision, you're getting added visual acuity Plus, you're able to maneuver that lens within a half an inch of the target. Dr. Lerner says that the Da Vinci robot has been around for almost 10 years now and is being used by doctors across the globe. It's primarily used for prostate, gynecological, and gastric bypass surgeries. It mimics hand and wrist movements to ensure accuracy. Every surgeon has a tremor, and it could be very fine, and you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. but the Da Vinci's instruments 
that are mimicking your movement dampens the tremor. So you're able to bring the surgery up to you visually. You're able to utilize the same instruments that you did as an open surgeon, but apply them without a tremor. Uh, for years, in order to do surgery, you had to open the patient and put uh, your hands and your instruments inside the patient. But now the majority of cancer surgery done at White Plains Hospital, it's done with minimally invasive techniques. Doctors also have the convenience of performing surgery with a Da Vinci robot in a completely separate location from the operating room. Normally when surgeries are performed, it usually requires very large incisions on the part of the doctors, but notice with the Da Vinci robot, these incisions are so tiny. And you know, the added benefit for these patients is that it cuts recovery time tremendously. Now, how quickly were you able to bounce back into your normal routine? Well, I think recovery is not something where you can just draw a line. It's a process. I can say, depending on your lifestyle, and this is it, everyone is different, but after two weeks, I could go back to the gym on a limited basis. After a month, I could do my regular workout. But like with most medical procedures, there is a downside. Very small scarring. There are five definitive scars, but they're small and uh, much much, much minor in the way of scarring. But as she, he says, he wouldn't have the surgery any other way. And she, he says that his cancer was contained and he was not required to undergo any chemotherapy or radiation today. He's cancer free and a, follows a healthy diet and exercise program. Many of us fly commercial to destinations, but you're probably not the one flying the plane. I recently took my first flight lesson with Air East Airways in Farmingdale and got the thrill of a lifetime. For many, getting on a plane is a piece of cake, but flying it yourself, well, that's a whole nother ball game. We've been working with students for over 26 years now, and uh, we have many, many of our students are now airline captains. Maureen Tarasio is the operations manager at Air East Airways in Farmingdale. She says learning how to fly is not as difficult as you may think. They have to be able to pass the medical to become a student pilot. They, uh, the person has to be able to read and write English. 21-year-old Romel Mangru is one of the many flight students here at Air East. He's been taking lessons for about a year and dreams of one day becoming a commercial pilot. It's uh, indescribable sometimes uh, with you know the scenery and just uh, adrenaline. Uh, rush. <laughs> that sounds wonderful, but will flying offer the same rush for me? There's only one way to find out. Before takeoff, instructor Jacob Warbach gives me what's called a ground lesson. It involves learning about the parts of the aircraft and the basic commands needed for communication during flight. We also go through a series of safety checks. What are we looking for? Just any loose wires, any broken cables, anything out of the ordinary. There's the engine and fuel check. There's even a gas test. And you're just looking for any particles of dirt, any water that may have gotten in the fuel. After confirming that everything is in working order, it's safe to board the plane. But before we go, we get one final check of the weather forecast. Continuous recorded broadcasts that you can tune up for frequency and you can pick up all this weather information here. And once we get the OK from ground control, we are cleared for takeoff. Despite some strong winds, it's a smooth ride into the friendly skies. Our journey takes us over local roads, parkways, shopping centers, and one of Long Island's famous destinations, Fire Island. The ride isn't always smooth, though, but I am able to land the plane safely. Oh, my goodness. One thing's for sure, coming out on a day like today with the winds picking up to about 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts, it could definitely make you really queasy. As you could tell, I'm not really feeling so well. But it's worth doing all over again. A lesson will cost you 160 bucks an hour. It takes about a year to earn a basic private pilot certificate.